Hi everybody, it's Chelsea from Cottontail Farm. Thank you for coming to tune in on Thanksgiving. And I hope that you're having a beautiful day wherever you are, wherever you're watching from, and whenever you're watching from. Uh, it is 65 here today in Southwest Virginia for November, almost the end of November, that's not normal. We tend to get a few nice days here and there, but not this warm. Uh, the evenings are pretty cold, so I guess that's making up for it. But I just want to take a minute, introduce myself before we get the show started. If you have not tuned into me at a live before or met me in person uh, at any of the fiber fests in the eastern coast of the United States, then welcome. Uh, I hope that you find something that you like and learn something new or at least just have a really good time while you're relaxing on Thanksgiving. So I am the maker behind Cottontail Farm. I do not own rabbits. A lot of people think Cottontail Farm comes from me owning rabbits. I do not. Uh, we have Finn sheep here on the farm and I think they look like my first flock and my first lamb, lambing season, they were all white. Uh, they <laughs> looked like little cotton balls out in the field. So that's why I named it Cottontail Farm. Uh, they just look like little cotton balls sitting out there and as, as they got bigger and fluffier, they just got cuter and cuter. So I am Cottontail Farm. I am a bag maker. I am a tool maker. I make everything that you see uh, here and in my Etsy shop one at a time by myself in my home studio here. I have a two car detached garage from the house and when we looked at this house to move in, uh, I kind of claimed it before my, <laughs> my husband even had any other ideas for it at all. Uh, so it has become my workshop. There's this this table right in front of me is my huge cutting table. Uh, behind me there are two shelves full of fabric and all my stock my inventory. Uh, the laser cutter is over to my left. There is actually, believe it or not, my um, pet chinchilla is over behind this side. She's a sweetie. She keeps me company if the kids aren't out here with me. Uh, speaking of family, I am married to my husband. He's a school teacher. He's a virtual school teacher this year. So that's new and fun and exciting. Uh, they're home all day. Uh, my kids, I have three kids. They're 10, eight, almost nine. She's nine next week. She won't let me say that she's eight without telling everyone that she's turning nine soon. And Adeline is three. Uh, if you follow me on Instagram, you see them pop up every now and again. I don't, they don't really um, <laughs> interact with this very much, but um, they, they do pop up every now and again. So if you were at any of the virtual, not virtual, any of the real shows before we went virtual, uh, you may have seen Adeline with us a couple a uh, couple years until she learned to walk. She would actually come to the Fiber Festivals with me. So that's just a little bit about me. Uh, I have been creating bags now for about six years and I didn't start with bags. So we started going to Fiber Festivals uh, because we have sheep, we have farms, and we wanted to get our toes wet a little bit in what the fiber crafting community and uh, all that looked like. So we started going to fiber festivals and our first one was Carolina down in North Carolina. Oh gosh, probably five years ago now, four, no, might be six years ago now. I'll have to look at a calendar. So we went to that one and I did not, I was not making bags then. I was doing art bats out of Suffolk wool, a uh, sheep flock that we had just learned how to shear, and other fiber goodies. I had little acorns. Uh, we had our fleeces, um, nothing that like what our booth looks like now. And I keep saying we because I do all the festivals with my mom. Uh, so if you've met us, her name is Robin. She's Gypsy Mountain Farm. We do operate as two separate businesses um, just because we do things so differently and we're not a partnership exactly, but we do everything together. So I make the bags and the tools. And if you see us at festivals, Robin makes um, beautiful, beautiful art bats, uh, hand dyed yarn and farm yarn and fleeces and roving. Um, if, if there's something that you, if you can't find something in our booth and when you see us in person, then um, you need to look harder, I guess, because there's everything. But uh, so that's just a little bit about me, about where I come from, where we come from in the fiber community. And what you see all the way around me are my holiday bags for this year. 
and just so that you can see them up close <laughs> this is uh, just a good way to feature them uh, we I am going to kind of split the presentation into tools and bags because those are my two main things so you'll see um, I'll pop up down here somewhere in the screen and it'll change a little bit so that I'll become little and the bags that I'm showing you or the tools that I'm showing you will become the more featured space on here so I hope you aren't too stuffed with turkey if you've already eaten or that you're not you know starving if you're one of a family that eats super super late we've done it both ways we don't have a set tradition of what time we eat and this year I'm not even sure what time we're eating so I have to get on that I guess I just did my grocery shopping for it or online grocery shopping I don't pick it up till um, a few days from now uh, and this is pre-recorded <laughs> if you can't tell uh, I am doing this a few days ahead so that I do have that family time so if you want to hang out live uh, if you missed this morning's stuff it we are actually gonna go through and just show you how much you can stuff in all the bags so it's a little live uh, on blue jeans we're gonna call it stuffing it and if you want to catch me in the evening I am doing a needle felted sheep workshop you did have to pre-purchase the kits but if you want to come tune in and have some fun I'm totally cool with that it's uh, you have to register for it um, on the Camp Yarn Z website so relax and let's go have some fun okay who's ready to look at some bags so we'll do those first as you can see I'm down here in the corner of your screen and the big mat in front of you is actually my cutting mat it will be the best surface for you to see everything uh, up close and personal and hopefully you can get a feel for what my bags would look like in person uh, a little bit better than just looking at some Etsy listings so let's get started uh, I am going to start from uh, like smallest bag size to the largest bag size so let's just see this is my smallest so this is a teeny tiny little bag and forgive me while I get my orientation correct here there we go all right so these bags are approximately and you can see the the measurements on my mat here but they're between four and a half to almost five inches in uh, measurements and then they have a zipper on the top okay, they're white on the inside most everything I make is white on the inside these little guys are perfect for your notions uh, stitch markers uh, anything that's little and tiny that you want to keep with you on the go they have a lobster clasp on this side so you can clip it to the side of your bag you can clip it on the inside of your bag uh, anywhere you'd like to put it good for change if you don't want to use it for notions uh, good for coins or, or just like a little to-go bag like if you just want like your license and your debit card you can clip it right to your belt so these come in different patterns this one's just a cute little owl and to give you an example some have uh, fabric on the front that in the back is different so just keep an eye on that when you're looking through make sure you're checking all the way through all the pictures in Etsy because if they do have different backs I'll show you that and then this one has some goodies inside so just to give you an example if you missed stuffing it this morning this one can hold a gauge and what else do I have in here I have some stitch counters my number counters uh, and then lots 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 more room is in there uh, all my bags do have like my sewn in label on them he's on the inside a little cotton that's cotton I named the sheep cotton and as you can see there's still quite a bit of room in there so that is my smallest little notion pouch easy quick to go little thing easy to put into every bag so that you have everything that you need uh, without having to sort through your notions and pick out which ones you need for each project if you just have a whole bunch of those made up ready to go and just pop one in each one of your bags then you're all set next a little bit bigger these are triangle pouches and these vary in size sometimes and the sizes will be listed specifically in the listings in Etsy so if one is a tad smaller than the average I make note of it in the description but these measure about let's see three four five by six if I'm just looking at my measurements on my map these triangle notion pouches are just a cute little variation on a notion pouch 
they will hold a little bit more than the square zipper again uh, I enclose my ends of my zippers so that like if you pull really hard you're not going to pull your zipper off white on the inside as well there are surged edges this is my only one that I make that has um, like a semi exposed edge but they are surged with my serger so you don't need to worry about them um, coming undone or anything but they're white on the inside great little pouch they do have a ribbon hanger and to give you an example of what fits in these this little manatee look at how cute those are aren't they silly little fat manatees not that there are any manatees that aren't fat I don't know I love them I think they're adorable these have three mini helpers and these are two and a half by two and a half inches each so that'll give you an idea of um, how they fit in the base of them and a pair of fold-up scissors and a set of holiday stitch markers so if you if you stay tuned um, we'll go over all of these tools that you're seeing but just to give you an example of what fits in them I wanted to have those ready so that you can see and again this one has still tons more room in the bottom of it to fit even more um, in there I, I generally have like a set of scissors a gauge, um, a needle gauge, a swatch gauge, stitch markers, uh, a darning needle, and a bobbin um, full of like spare yarn, like if you have to do uh, putting some of your sleeves on hold. That's what I put into my little notions bags, the little notions bags. My big notion bags, I fit like everything in. So those are just the little triangle guys. Those are the notion pouches. And another size I make, so I have two more Notion specific pouches. These are more of like your typical pencil bag shape. They are three, six, seven, eight and a half by one, two, three, four and a half. You can see there on the mat. They are flat. There is no gusset on these. Some of them do have various fabrics on them. And I started making these because I had a, from making the, uh, my, some of my drawstring bags, I had this piece of fabric and I hate wasting fabric. Absolutely hate it. I do have scrap buckets galore full of all the itty bitty pieces that I will eventually scrap bust and make some quilted bags. But this was the end of making the drawstring bags. So I didn't want to waste it and I thought, well, I can always make a new notion size. So this is what came out of that. And to give you an example of what fits in these, Again, zippered, the tabs are closed. White on the inside. This one has a larger needle gauge in it. A swatch gauge. And this is my favorite size to use for DPNs. And I use DPNs on my little knitted rabbits that I make. Um, I make my kids them for Easter and I make new clothes for them every year. So that's the only reason I actually own DPNs. I don't use them for anything else but those little knitted rabbits. So they fit perfectly. And these are six inch D DPNs. You could probably get a six and a half inch one in there, but these fit perfectly. Also, I love flexi flips and flexi flips fit in here really, really well too. So that's usually what's in one of these for me. And the last notion bag I make are these. Uh, they are more of your everything notion pouch. And I'm going to be showing you mostly my Christmas bags just because they're brand new and who doesn't like looking at cute Christmas holiday bags. So these are interfaced. They are gusseted on the bottom and they're interfaced with fleece. So they're nice and squishy, but they will stand up like there's nothing in this bag and it'll stand straight up for you. Uh, my newer, my newest bags that I make, so all the holiday bags do have my little stitched name, ta name logo tag on here. You can see that right on there. They have, this size has a D ring on it instead of a lobster clasp, so you can connect a handle straight to this if you want to. Enclosed tabs, zipper tabs, white on the inside. I think I have 
Best example of how much fits in here, this is a fingering weight ball of yarn in one of my skein wranglers. It fits in there with a tiny bit of room to spare. Like you could get your sock project in this. Uh, I wouldn't go any heavier than a fingering weight just so that you can still zip it. But that is how much those will hold. I generally do not do my socks in this because I like carrying all my ZPNs with me. I like carrying my gauge with me. And it just is too much to stuff in there all at once. But these are great for everything else in, in your Notions kit. Um, your gauge, your swatch, maybe your four inch swatch instead of just a little mini two inch one. Um, all your needles that you could adore <laughs> and want and any stitch markers that you can think of. So and maybe a larger pair of scissors. That's the Notion pouch. And this was probably uh, the most common one I make of the Notion pouches. Uh, this one I have to restock pretty frequently. So that is in the shop, in the NSE shop. If I haven't mentioned it yet, over to the left on your screen is my logo. And that's also where my Etsy shop is. That's where you can do any purchasing, where you can find more detailed pictures of things and uh, further descriptions of stuff. Uh, moving on, oh, I did have this size. I, got, I grabbed the wrong size. This is what I like to call a sock hat or small project bag. Same shape as the Notion pouch. They're just larger and I intend them to be for socks, hats, beginning of cowls, uh, anything that's like a smaller project. Uh, they are made exactly the same way, except they do have a detachable handle. Okay, it has the lobster clasp on it. So you could interchange these or you could just steal this and go put it on another bag. Uh, you can also put your stitch markers here and then clip it to your bag so you know where your stitch markers are. Uh, interfaced as well with the fleece so it stands up really great with nothing in it. Also will fold flat. These measure just under 11 inches by eight inches when they're flat. And then on the inside, they are white as well. No pockets in this size. Um, I still don't have pockets in the smaller sizes just because it's, um, it's they're kind of time consuming to make pockets are. So for the smaller bags, it seems a little inefficient. Um, and a lot of people would just stick their Notion pouch in their smaller bags or don't need them in a smaller bag. So my small bags do not have pockets. They're just white lined cotton. Uh, some of the bags uh, since the pandemic may be lined in an off-white, but it's still cotton. Um, white cotton got hard to find there for a little bit. So it is back for now. <laughs> I'm glad to see it back, but some might be just a tint of an off-white instead of just solid white. So that is the sock hat size. Lots of different fabrics of these. I restock these pretty quickly as well. Uh, all of my bags are top stitched at where they meet here just because I like how it looks. Not that it needs it, but I like how finished it makes it look. And they are also top stitched up here by the zipper. And I run my top stitching through to the inside as well. Now I know if you're a professional sewer or have learned sewing the correct way, you're not supposed to do that. You're not supposed to carry your top stitch through to the inside of your fabric. Uh, I do because I don't want to catch the fabric in my zipper. Um, I, that's just something that's always aggravated me. I hate catching jackets in my zipper, anything. So I just carry the, the sewing straight through so then this liner doesn't pop up and get into your zipper. That is the sock hat size or small. And each of the bag sizes are gonna be listed in Etsy on the left hand side um, like per category. There's small, sock, drawstring, uh, notion, shawl, medium. And to give you an example of what fits in one of these, I have the <laughs> future hat. Uh, it's some um, worsted, no, this is bulky weight yarn. You can see those colors. I just, I, I love it. I just haven't gotten to do it yet with a skein wrangler on it. I have my needle ready to go for the hat size that um, hat pattern I already have picked and it just pops right in and you can see even with a bulky size yarn 
there's plenty of room still in the bag. Quick, easy size to keep with you in your car or on the go with you. If you're a big purse carrier, they fit in those as well. The last zipper size I make is a medium slash shawl bag. When flat, these measure 15 by nine. They are made exactly the same as the Notion and sock size, small size. Only difference with these is obviously their size and this size does have the pocket. There is a pocket with a light white lining on the inside. You can see this one's a little bit off-white so because this, this is a brand new one. Uh, it, it was a little bit different color. Okay, there's that one. Handle, detachable handle. Also lobster clasp handle. Now I'm gonna have to take these uh, reindeer ears off. It gives me a headache. <laughs> Okay, so those are my zipper sizes. Again, it has my logo tag here. Interface the same way, will fold flat on the off chance you're not using them. And they're ready to go. Perfect for any project that is two or three skeins. Uh, let's see if I've got, got a couple balls of yarn here, I'll show you. So this one's attached to a project over there, but there's one. So this is a like a DK weight ball and a fingering weight ball. You can see there's plenty of room in there to keep adding your project. Also would fit a notions bag in it. If you want to stuff a notions bag down in there, that would fit as well. Okay, so then you have everything in your, your bag. Really catch all size bag because it does, you know, fit your notion pouch. Um, if you were just doing a hat and you also wanted to carry your, your bigger Notions pouch, you could fit that one in there. And it does still zip. There's a good two or three inches of um, head space still in here. Great for shawls and um, beginnings of sweaters. Unless you're knitting a child sweater, um, I wouldn't suggest using it for uh, a total sweater project yourself. I can get about half of a sweater project in DK weight done in this with the yarn included in the bag but you just it you run out of rooms once you start getting towards the body and your sleeves so keep that in mind when you're picking a size and the my best um advice for picking a bag size pick a size that you you knit the most projects of so it, especially if you're on a limited budget or trying to pick a project or pick a gift for somebody that you know Think about what you see them knitting the most, what you favor the most. Um, I love knitting sweaters. I don't ever get to finish a lot of sweaters, mostly because I'm doing this as a business versus knitting. But um, that's how I how I decide what kind of bag I would like. Is I I go I gravitate towards what I would use the most. Uh, so for me, it's it's either this size or the next size that I'm going to show you. Uh, if you knit strictly hats and socks then there's no reason to have a giant, giant bag. You can you can pick one of the, the smaller bags. All right, so from zippers, since I know everybody doesn't love zippers, and I did not used to make drawstring bags. I strictly started with zipper bags, and I had so many people at festivals ask for drawstrings that I caved and <laughs> I finally started making some drawstring bags. So. This is my smallest drawstring bag. This is comparable to the hat sock size. It's almost like, almost identical once you get it pulled up. So this is the zipper bag laying on top of it and you can barely see it. So if you are a hat, a sock, a cowl person, but you don't like zippers, this is the size of bag you'd like. These drawstrings are in dimensions. They are 12 by almost nine in size. They fold perfectly flat. These are interfaced a little bit differently just because you do have to drawstring them and the fleece doesn't like to drawstring super well. So they're interfaced with a lighter fabric. They fold very flat. They will stand up when they're empty. They have ribbon as drawstrings. They pull super, super close, tight, closed. So you don't have to worry about it like 
not pulling all the way shut and your needles falling out or maybe your stitch markers you're carrying for your socks. Okay. White on the inside, no pockets in these. And there's a canvas, camp, cotton canvas handle. So when this is pulled shut, you can just grab the handle and go. It does fit on your wrist. Okay, it makes a perfect, you could keep it open a little bit. It makes a perfect little on the go sock knitting bag. And to give you an example of the inside of this, here is my tried and true one. This is the first one I ever made of the drawstring. So I was, it's not perfect and I keep the ones that are a little bit imperfect. But this one has my sock tubes that I made on a sock, mach sock knitting machine. Okay, that's the whole, whole 438 yard tube and two minis for my toes, heels, and cuffs, ready to go in there. And I generally, since this is my sock knitting bag, have my rectangular notion bag that has my DPNs in it and my sock gauge inside there as well too. And there's still room, like there's still plenty of room in this bag for anything else you wanna shove in there. Just pull a strut and you're ready to go. Now this one does not have the cotton canvas handle all the ones that I list on Etsy do. Um, I just hadn't decided to add it yet on this bag. Okay. So that's my smallest drawstring. And a lot of times if you see a fabric, I haven't mentioned this yet, a lot of times if you see a fabric in my shop and um, some people will email me and ask like, hey, can you make it in this size? I like this fabric. Oftentimes I cannot. Uh, mostly because I buy my fabric from an independent shop down here in Virginia and I go and I buy a couple yards and by the time I'm out of it or need more and go back it's gone um, they are not a big box store they don't keep bolts and bolts and bolts of the same fabric on hand uh, so a lot of times it's different now this one was an exception these mousies were super super cute I bought it from Toad Hollow uh, she's a um, another indie dyer. Uh, they also just started carrying fabric. So I had bought this from her. So this is a newer, newer fabric, but um, I could get more of this. But in general, most of my fabrics, I, I make, I make everything that I buy, cut it all up, make it, and that's it. And I move on to a new fabric. Uh, mostly because I just love all the fabrics in the world and I would love to just keep rotating in and out. Um, so that makes it um, it's kind of unique because then the bag that you get is probably only one, maybe two of that bag. Um, there might be some that are similar, like the, the tops will be the same. Like obviously this one, this one, and this one, you know, they have this mousies, but the bottoms are different. So they might be a little bit different. If you're buying a sweater bucket or a blanket bucket, there's usually one blanket bucket of that. So you have a totally unique bag. Nobody else is gonna have it. Um, it's not a mass produced bag. The um, sweater buckets, there might be two, but they're not gonna be the same either. The bottoms are gonna be different. The handles are gonna be different. That's just the way I like to make things. So anyway, back to it. The next drawstring size bag I have is this one. This one is relatively new. It is a little bit different it is the only bag I make with canvas currently. The bottoms and the drawstrings are canvas, so they're a little bit heavy duty. Um, they wash they wash well, like if you get the bottoms dirty, you can really scrub these. You're not gonna have to worry about um, damaging your cotton, like, you know, being gentle with it. The canvas wears really well. They're just a all around great bag. They do have a drawstring up here. These are thicker cotton cords two handles, two cotton webbing handles. They measure 15, 15 and a half by 10 and a half when they're flat, when they're opened up. These are pretty beefy bags. They are very, very tall. So when you stand them up, they're 11 inches tall. These hold a ton of yarn. Uh, I have my Stephen West shawl in one, uh, the painted bricks. I'm about halfway done and I still have room in the bag. 
So I think you could fit an entire one in there as you go, unless it's just one of his absolutely giant, giant, giant ones. Uh, you'd be fine. Uh, sweater, perfect for sweaters. Um, I don't have enough skeins of yarn here to show you, but as an example, there's one, there's two. These are various different weights of yarn. There's two DK weights and a fingering weight. So that's three. You could fit four DK weights in the bottom and still have six, almost seven inches of clearance here for your project to sit on top of it. These drawstring shut, pretty tight. Um, it's pretty strong. The canvas and the cotton cord together make a really strong um, closure when you close it. You've got to really kind of tug at it to get it open. Stand up perfectly fine. Interfaced uh, with a lighter interfacing. It is the same interfacing as the small drawstring, um, but with that canvas, it makes it even sturdier when you open it up. This size, with the exception of the couple of Halloween bags I still have left in the shop, do have pockets on the side. There are two. They run the width of the bag. So you've got two pretty generous size pockets. Um, just as an example, here's my Notion pouch. It fits down in the pocket to give you an idea of size. Uh, here is my sock zipper pouch. It fits in the bottom and there's still headspace. So it is a very generous size bag. I love using this bag for sweaters and for shawls just because it's pretty um, hard wearing. So these are new. There's not a whole ton of them in the shop. I really just started making these at Halloween. Uh, it is a new size for me and I'm looking forward to making more of them. They are part of now my regular cut, um, cut lineup when I have a couple yards of fabric. I lay it out on this table and then just cut all the sizes from it at once. I just started doing some bird fabric. So if you follow along on Instagram, that will be the next um, one up. It might almost be mid-December before I get them done just because the next couple weeks are a little crazy. And uh, finding time to sew is hard with everybody home. But uh, th yeah, follow along on Instagram and you'll see what what um up next on the cutting mat and sewing machine. So that's that size, really generous size. If you are a die-hard sweater knitter or like absolutely giant worsted weight shawls, uh, this is the bag for you. This is what I call a sweater bucket. Now these are super fun to make because there's one, two, three, four different spots to change up the fabric. I don't ever usually I don't ever usually, that's a really bad sentence. Um, these are usually never the same fabrics. Um, they're always different. I try to make them kind of a uh, mismatch of the colors within the fabric scheme. So they're super fun to make because you can vary them so much. They are drawstring at the top. It drawstrings from up here, where you can see my fingers up here. This is the drawstring. So laying flat on my table, it's 15, almost 16 inches wide. And from where the handles hit, I know this little out of your frame, to the base is seven inches. So from here to here is seven inches. Then the drawstring is seven more inches from here to here. So all told from top to bottom is 14 inches. That's all flat measurements. Now they have a pretty big gusset on the bottom of them. So that's the base. There's your inside. And I know that's a little hard to see, but it's white on the inside. This size does not have pockets. That's the inside. Example for how many skeins will fit in there. Keep in mind, these are DK weight and one <laughs> fingering weight. I did a project, my color work um, Soldatna I had six skeins in here all at once with my project in it and I never had to change bags. I used that bag for the whole sweater. I also made it, um, it's not a crop, it's a full length sweater and my sleeves are um, 
I don't know, mid arm. They're not full sleeves, but I never had to change project bags, which was really great because that was a lot of um, different colors to keep up with the whole time. So that's the inside. And let me show you how it closes. These are stiffer interface. The base is the top drawstring shut, nice and tight. You don't need to worry about um, kids or pets getting into this. And it also has a push toggle to hold it very securely shut. Uh, these are great to travel with because you're not going to worry about spilling your bag out onto your floorboards or if you're, you're on the bus or something, you don't have to worry about things falling out. Really great for kids and pets not to get in your bag. I use one of these also when I'm spinning. I have my spinning fiber in it next to my wheel because we have an indoor cat that absolutely loves fiber. She will take the ball of fiber, she will take a ball of yarn and just run. Uh, if you have pets, I'm sure <laughs> you have experience with this. But So I keep my fiber next to my spinning wheel in one, can close this tight when I'm not spinning, and I don't have to worry about her stealing it. They also work as a straight up bucket. Push the top down in the inside and you've got a pretty big, nice bucket. The handles themselves, these are interfaced with fleece. So they are one and a half inches wide across this way. So you're not going to worry about when this is full up of your sweater and your yarn, it digging into your hand because these are nice and squishy and they're wide enough that it's not going to really hurt your hand if you've got it loaded up to the T. They have been stitched here about six times. Um, I go back and forth on it a few times and then just with the top stitching and everything, um, they're nice and secure. You're not going to worry about your handles breaking. All around a great um, bag if you don't know what you're going to be knitting. You don't know if you're going to switch between shawls and sweaters. Um, good size for that. So that is the blanket bucket and look at this poor bear got his head cut off. But it's okay. There's a full one down here. Uh, fabric placement. I try to take the best pictures that I can. Uh, I rotate the bags in my pictures uh, so that you can see both sides. Just because, you know, you might really like these raccoons over here. They might be really cute and you want to make sure you have them. So I do take pictures of both sides of my bags. Again, if it's a newer bag, it has my tag here. So that's a blank, or sorry, sweater bucket. Now, if you're a blanket person, this is the size bucket I started making. Then I made the sweater bucket. Um, I realize not everybody needs a bucket this giant. So that's where the sweater bucket came about and why that came into existence mm, about a year and a half ago. But this is the one I started with. So if you've seen me at shows, these are the giant ones. Now you can see it covers most of my mat from bottom to the drawstring top is 19 inches. The base is nine and a half inches from here to here is nine and a half inches. And then the top is about nine and a half inches. Handles are made the same way. The fleece interface handles, same width. These fit an enormous amount of yarn. If you are a blanket knitter, this is your gal. This is you're going to be your friend. These are huge. In the Etsy listing, if you scroll through some of them, there is a picture of my daughter sitting in one. She was about a year and a half old, I think, when she was actually sitting in it. She was pleased as punch. She thought it, it was the funniest thing ever. But they're really, really big. So me putting these three skeins of balls of caked up yarn in here, it barely makes a dent. It maybe takes up a third of it. Not very much problem fitting massive amounts of yarn in here. So this is your everything bag. If you want to bring all your bags with you, <laughs> this is the bag you want to bring to bring it with you. Let's see, what else can we fit in here? There's a sock size, a notion size, there's a drawstring size. Still have room. Let's see, what else can we stick in there? Um, triangle pouch. <laughs> Other notions bag. And that's not even with the drawstring shut. So if I really want to work at this, I still have nine and a half more inches up towards you and the camera 
to fit more bags in there, or excuse me, more project in there, more knitting in there, more crocheting in there, not to leave out the crocheters. So these are giant, uh, easily 10 skeins of yarn would fit in there, plus your project. Uh, really, really great for buckets. If you're doing a worsted weight sweater for your significant other, uh, say they're a, a larger size, really great for that. But good catch-all if you want to travel and you want just like a fun bag to hold them all. This is your your, your friend. Um, and I do I did rename these blanket buckets. They are no longer known as sweater buckets because I did start making the other size. So just keep that in mind when you're looking at them. There aren't very many of these in the shop right now. I do need to take some time and restock them. This one's just a really fun doll one. I like the playful colors in it. So those are the general size bags that I have. Uh, now the next up I'm going to do are more of like my um, organizers. Um, I guess I'll just show you because I don't know what else to call them besides organizers. Um, Okay, so these are pattern keepers. Now, pattern keepers, I know if you use Knit Companion, those are basically just online. Um, you use your iPad or your iPhone to, to take those along. I still personally like printing my, um, my patterns. Just, they're easier to get to. I don't have to worry about if I turn my iPad on, then my daughter, and who's three, Addie's only three, is she like gravitates towards an iPad. I mean, the older ones do too, but they know if I'm knitting to leave it alone. Addie wants to look at pictures. She wants to find the next PBS show on it. Uh, so I, I still like printing because then I know if I'm printing, using a printing pattern, I'm going to get left alone for, you know, maybe 10 minutes, maybe. Uh, <laughs> so this is what I use. I write all over my patterns. I shove them into my bags pretty harshly. Uh, and I needed to make something that was going to keep them intact. So I wouldn't have to reprint them multiple times. Um, when I spill my coffee, which I am really well known for making giant messes out of my coffee. I'm not going to say I haven't ruined a keyboard or two with coffee. Uh, then I don't need to worry about spilling it on my pattern, at least. So these are pattern <laughs> keepers to get less distracted here. They are trifold. So they keep nice and compact and I'll show you how they fit in one of the bags in just a minute but they are snap closure okay and there's two different examples here when you open them up so this is them closed when you open them up they are large enough to fit an eight and a half by eleven piece of paper multiple sheets of paper maybe not a 30 page pattern but I've had at least three clues of the Sharon show in mine and it will still fold up fine and, and shut because there is leeway in this clasp, in this snap, for your pattern pocket to get rather bulky. So this clear, you can read, you can read that. I mean, the glare from my lights are, they're catching the camera, but you can read straight through this clear plastic here. Slides right in and out the side. Then they are bias taped here, so you've got a nice finished edge. And there's one of the backs. The best part about these is you can either lay them flat, straight on your table, or if you have little room or you don't want to be bending over your, your own pattern, these will snap up. So there's a snap here and a snap here. You just take this, move the closure out of the way, and catch those snaps. Now it'll stand up. Now I know you're that way. So you can, if your pattern is in here, you can see this says pattern pocket right here. You can flip it as you go and you can read your pattern without undoing it, without having to take it out. You can get through a whole, whole page of your pattern before you'd have to take it out and turn it over. And it will be standing up for you and directionally correct. So just a fun little way to do that. They vary in patterns, obviously, because I can't just use one kind of fabric. Uh, they're a little bit harder to take pictures of for Etsy because they are, you know, they're, they're folded over. So 
I, they are, there are pictures, sorry, excuse me, um, all the way through Etsy. Just scroll to the right and you'll see all the pictures because some of them are really pretty and you don't get a sense of that until you scroll through the pictures. They do have my tag here and on the inside. Some of them are more um, scrappy put together than others. Just depends on what I was doing, what fabrics I had, um, and just the mood I felt like doing. So those are pattern pockets. Those are my one of my organizers. They are stiff, so that's why they stand up. They fit down in the bottom of a shawl size bag. So this is my zippered shawl size bag. So any size from this size up, they will fit in the bottom. And I did that on purpose so that you, you know, they fit flat right in the bottom of these. Okay, so you can put your pattern right in the bottom of your bag and then your project on top. Or you can slide it down the side if your project's already in there. So then from this size up, from the shawl medium size, they fit. Uh, next up for organizers, and pattern pockets have their own tab in Etsy on the left hand side if you just want to see those without looking through all the organizers, uh, just find the pattern pocket there. These are DPN, not DPN, interchangeable needle cases. So these needle cases came about because I didn't like the case that my Knitter's Pride came with. It was like this big chunky case and I didn't like how it felt. So I made I made one of these and this size that I currently have, they fit five inch interchangeable needles. If you have a larger needle, this will not close securely to the snap. So if you have larger needles and you'd like a needle case that looks like this, email me and we can take a tour of my uh, fabric stash and find a fabric that you like. If you have smaller needles, they will fit, but they're gonna get maybe lost down into the chambers. So I have made a couple custom ones that are for the three inch tips, like the little mini tips. And simply this whole thing just gets shortened down. So from where your needles sit in here is four inches. So if you have something that's smaller than four inches, um, it is gonna slip past the top and you're gonna have a hard time getting them out. So just message me and we can work something out. To give you an example of these, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven slots for needles here that are divided up so that they're secure. Sorry, doing a bad job at that. Then there is a pocket behind for your um, cords. Couldn't think of the word. Some of these, again, are scrappy, quilted. Depends on what I was doing. I really like making these out of all the bits and bobs that are left after cutting my length of bags because it makes them really just fun and unique. And definitely, there's not more than one of these. Um, I make them just so different. So you know yours is yours and nobody else is going to have it. Here's the one that has mine in it. You can see it has my whole set in there. These are big enough that you could fit another set in there. And then my cord is in the back. It would fit multiple cords down in there. So when they snap shut, I'm shaking this pretty hard. I'm sorry if it made you dizzy. My needles are not falling out because this fits right at that five inch, which is why I said if you have six inch ones, it's not gonna close because it folds right at the tip of these needles so they don't fall out. Really great little to-go bag if you are traveling, know you're gonna need to switch your interchangeable sets and not have to take maybe your entire set, like if you have, um, like a full five inch and then the full three inch size, you don't have to take them all with you. You can just take a few. So those are my interchangeable cases. Uh, other needle cases that I have, sorry, my yarn is getting a little hung up over here. These are needle cozies. 
These work for double pointed needles. They work for flexi flips and circular. They will work on six inch or eight inch ones. They are nine inches long by two inches wide. So this is nine, this is two, but these snaps are centered so that it will work for a six inch needle as well. So they're centered on five inches, the snaps are. So if you like short ones or the longer ones of GPNs, they're gonna fit up in there. Now, the way these work, so I just started a fingerless mitt. This is some of my mom's yarn. Um, I can't remember what kind of yarn it is. She's, hmm, I, I bought it from her before she put the label on it and I can't remember what it is. But anyway, it's on my flexi flips. So the flexi flips are a set of three and you just take it. If you've never used one of these before, these are just little plastic cam snaps. I get the cam snaps because I like that I can make them match the fabric. Let me use a darker one so you can see a little better. So they open up. And then you just take them, put them up into your project. Now, if, as your project grows, more of your project is going to stick out on the edge here. But your needles are up past the snaps and you just snap it shut. So now when you go to shove this into your bag, which is exactly what I do, it's not going to fall out. Like your needles aren't going to pull. I mean, well, I just pulled that a little bit because I was yanking really hard, but they're not going to fall out there. That's a better example. Like they're not going to shake out of there, but as your project grows, it's going to hang out here. Now, if you're using DPNs, it works exactly the same. Uh, if you're using socks, hats, anything like that. Uh, they, your project will stick out and your needles are up past these snaps. If you're using circular needles, your circular needles will go in and then your cord will hang out over here so that your cord is here with your project on it. So it won't come out the middle, but it will work and your circulars will be um, secured up into this portion of the needle cozy. So those are super duper handy a cute little notion if you um want to get somebody a little gift and you don't know if they like bags you don't know if they need another bag which i'm sorry but who doesn't need another cute bag uh says the project bag maker but just a, a fun little notion thing to keep um i tend to keep one in every bag uh, based on the project that i'm using so that i know when i'm traveling and I can stuff it in my bag pretty quickly without knocking my stitches off, which was a huge nervous thing I had when I first started knitting, is that I was gonna, um, I was gonna knock it off. Okay, so next up are my spinning wheel pockets. Now these I used to make uh, quite a long time ago and I was never happy with how they were turning out so I started to remake them once I learned how to make my handles better. So these spinning wheel pockets are super duper handy if you are a spinner, obviously, spinning wheel baskets. But they're, they're great if you just want something that's little and cute to sit next to your sewing machine, sit next to your side of the table, uh, hold your keys, uh, just anything you need a little pocket for. So these are a little uh, under four inches by four inches. They're base on them down here. They are white on the inside, like everything I've shown you so far. And what makes these unique um, is that they, these handles have a snap. So, and this is hard to picture in the Etsy listings but this snap on the one side, the other side is riveted um, stationary, but this snap allows you to put it onto your spinning wheel. And I have worked, used it on five different kinds of spinning wheels so far, but on your spinning wheel, you can snap this around where your um, orifice is and where like your fiber goes in, right around the base of your spinning wheel. And there's a picture of it on two different wheels that I have uh, in the Etsy listing, but what the snap, why the snap is important is because you can get it on and off them without taking your whole bobbin off of your spinning wheel. 
and it can hang there and hold a spinning gauge or your little bottle of oil. Um, if, if you do put your bottle of oil in here, I would suggest putting it in like one of those snack size baggies so that it doesn't get on the inside of your bag. But it's just, you can see, like it holds your gauge, it can hold your orifice hook in there and be right at the front of your spinning wheel ready to go whenever you are. So they have cute little pockets just for that. You can get this around your wrist if you are interested in using it as like a little wrist bag. Uh, a fingering weight yarn cake does fit in there, but it's a pretty tight squeeze. Um, I mean, it, it's got some room still a little bit here on the edge of this fingering weight yarn and you could get it on your wrist. So if you want to knit on the go, you could do that. Let me hold it up to this other camera so you can see it. You could do that as well, but I, I designed them for spinning wheels. So a cute little gift if you know a new spinner or a seasoned spinner that um, you need a Christmas gift for. These are perfect. Okay, they're cotton. They are the fleece interface, so they're soft and they will fold flat um, if you need to store them. Bunch of different patterns of those. Um, I do update these pretty regularly, so if there's not one that you like, um, just keep, in, keep watching. Uh, the last sewn item I have to show you before we move on to the tools that you've seen a couple of as we're going along here are my skein wranglers. Now, skein wranglers, my husband named them for me. Um, I've seen a few variations out and about. I've seen people use socks. I've seen people use pantyhose. Um, someone introduced me this past March, May, might have been May, it was May, at a knitting retreat that their florist shop actually saves the little plastic um, tubes that go on the top of their like roses and during transport. I use those, but they're not fun and pretty, you know, they're, they're useful, but they're not, um, I don't know, if you, if you have the chance to make something pretty, why not? So these are skein wranglers. They are jersey knit fabric, and I have them in a ton of different designs. So the jersey knit, why it's important is it stretches. And it can go around your caked up yarn. I mean, that stretches pretty far in various different sizes. So you've seen this one a few times now. This is on a fingering weight cake. And let's see, let me show you some other ones. This was the one that was on the bulky. Fits right around there. Still plenty of stretch in there. I've been asked if these fit the carrion cakes. Um, they, they're they close. It's really close. Uh, there are some that are more stretchy than others. If that's what you're looking for them, looking for one for, um, message me and I'll let you know which ones have more stretch because every jersey has different amounts of stretch in it. But... Generally, I wouldn't go any bigger than, um, like, this is the bulky or a worsted. Um, this one is, let me see, I even saved the tag from this one. Not like me to save a tag. Let me see how many yards this one was. This was Wonderland Yarns, 87 yards of bulky weight, uh, 4 ounces. And there was still room to go. So if you have a different size bulky, there's definitely room to play with in there. There's obviously room to play with in the fingering weight yarn. Some of the fingering weights, depending on how your ball winder cakes up your yarn, it might overhang a little bit. To me, that's fine because it keeps the bottom of your cake clean too. And you can see on this one, it overhangs a little bit. But I like the size because on like a DK weight, it fills it pretty well. And this was a, this was a big ball. So you can see that it covers that one from end to end. So I, I like these because um, they just make your yarn look fun, but the most important thing is they keep it uh, under control. They keep the dirt off of your yarn ball, and they if a cat does run away with it or a kid does run away with it, um, it's not going to totally unwind on you and make yarn barf. So skein wranglers are really great. Um, super useful if you're doing color work knitting and you have five or six colors in your bag. Uh, they're not going to get mixed up super, super easy. 
and you won't be dealing with like that mess or if they do get tangled like if you're not moving them around in your bag they're a whole lot easier to move and rearrange if they're in something like this now as you use it you can use it from outside pull or center pull uh, the first few rounds on your outside pull might be a little bit uh, snug but you can do it because I tend to pull from the outside and I use them that way uh, if you're an inside puller your ball will start to get smaller and smaller and smaller and the yarn cozy the skein wrangler will just condense um, on to the yarn as you go so those are my skein wranglers lots of patterns I tend to switch them out pretty often I get a couple yards cut it up cut it all up just like my bags and then move on so keep an eye on those so those are skein wranglers so the next thing we're gonna do is tools now if you don't want to watch for tools then uh, have a great Thanksgiving we'll see you some other time but if you want to stick around for some tools uh, I'm gonna show you the generally the tools that I have in stock almost all the time uh, I did have a crazy a uh, few weeks when my laser cutter actually broke and that was the only time where I actually had to pause tool making because I wanted to make sure that I knew when I was going to get the laser fixed and back in um, working order. So I have a giant basket of tools. I'm going to move it out of the way up here and I'm going to go through them and some of them are pretty self-explanatory. Some I'm going to show you how I use them and they're all made by me in my studio here. They are done on a laser cutter, which etches all the designs for me. All the designs though, I draw. So these aren't like um, mass produced drawings. They are something that I've created in Adobe Illustrator and then um, sent over to the laser cutter and it cuts it for me. So in that sense though, the, these are super customizable. If there's something that you're looking for, some kind of tool that you've just like, hey, I wish this existed. Um, if I can draw it, I can cut it. So feel free to contact me. A few of the tools I have now that you're going to see actually are results of somebody emailing me or texting or whatever um, and asking, hey, can you make this? Like it would be super useful. So with that, let's get started. Uh, these, I'm going to show you my most popular tools um, yet. <laughs> so these are various types of yarn gauges. Now they are similar in ways, but they also do different things. Let me move these over so you can see them a little better. They um, each have different qualities. Now this one is most suited to knitters because you're not a spinner or maybe you just need the one for knitting. Maybe you are a spinner, but this one is a gauge if you've lost your ball band like I do uh, you did see that I found one but that's not usually the case I don't usually have one um, these are recessed little lips here and if you've lost your ball band sorry I'm out of, out of focus there Let's see if I can get it to focus better kinda okay so you can read that it says lace fingering sport DK worsted Aaron bulky super bulky these are how many wraps per inch you generally have within an inch wraps per inch of the yarn to get your weight so if you've lost your ball band you can place it in the slot that you think it is and obviously I know this one's bulky and it'll show you that that spot is bulky so if you've lost your ball band now you know so you can either lay it in that spot or this is a one inch slot here in this one you would wrap it around with very little tension um, don't pull super super tight because that will change your wraps per inch now let's see so three four five six so I got six on this now these are not an exact science, but it'll get you close. And you can see super bulky is five to six wraps per inch. So it's just a little helper card. Uh, it's super handy to use, especially if you've gotten farther into a project or you've put it up into your skein wrangler, balled it up, caked it up, and have lost that band, like who knows when. Uh, it's, it's great to have if you 
um, use sport or DK or some light worsteds, it, it gets a little blurry about which is which. So that's just a little tool that can help you out. Now, if you're a spinner, spinners use these a little bit differently. They use these wraps per inch to keep themselves within a, a range of um, consistency. So if you want to be spinning at a fingering weight, you're going to want your singles to be half that weight. So you're going to be spinning up here per single. Then when you combine them, you'll have your fingering weight. A little bit of science in there, a little bit of math, uh, but it, it's just to, to help keep you consistent. So when you end up with your end, your finished product, it's more consistent than if you're just kind of winging it, which I wing it when I spin and I generally end up in a sport DK range. There is a twist angle on this one as well. If you're super particular, you can actually measure the twist in that yarn. Uh, if you're not a spinner, just for for fun, look at your yarn. You can actually see the angle that those those singles are being spun at. And then down here is a gauge, a one inch gauge, as well as a ruler. So this one only varies from this one because it has the diz. And the diz, if you're pulling from your fiber, can help keep you consistent as well. So this is actually one of the ones I was talking about that someone contacted me and asked like, hey, can you put a diz onto the control card? So, oh, there it is. And then this gauge is a catch-all. It is a needle gauge from zero to 15 in US and millimeters. It is a two inch swatch window here with US and centimeters. It's a wraps per inch down here with the details as well. And it is a ruler down both sides, the centimeters and inches. So this one, it's a little bit larger. It is seven inches by three inches. It's a, it's a rather large tool, but it's, it's one that maybe everybody should have in their toolkit somewhere so that you don't have to have multiples or this is the one that stays home in your basket, you know, next to your knitting chair. So those are my gate, the, the most common tools that I sell are those. Then I have, these are mini helpers. Now mini helpers are just little two and a half by two and a half inch square items. And you can um, see close up pictures on Etsy. And I know I'm getting way off center here. I think my camera must have moved. Okay, I fixed the camera a little bit better so you can see. So these mini helpers are two and a half by two and a half inch in, inches square, and they come in a whole bunch of different designs. There's one that's strictly a fiber diz for you spinners out there. And it has various different sizes as long as, as well as a one inch ruler. Then there is a twist angle. The twist angle is just a, a helper for spinners if you want it, just a small little reminder. There is cotton as a needle gauge, as well as a two inch ruler. Kitchener, you know, this one is simple instructions on Kitchener, like get you, get you from A to B. They're not full sentences and you can see a better picture on Etsy, but it is super useful any for any sock knitter in your life. Make one left, make one right. Same thing, just little reminders of how to, how to do the stitch. And wraps per inch, ooh, almost threw that at you. Which is, uh, just like the control card, you just don't have those recessed edges to, to get you there. This one is just the one inch window where you wrap around your gauge. So those mini helpers are super useful. Uh, if there's one that you'd like to see, I know um, I've made one for German short rows. I can't think of another one I've made. Totally blanking on it. But th if there's some, a little reminder that a stitch that you can't remember, um, I can easily make a custom one. So next up are sock rulers. Head to toe ruler. So these head to toe rulers come in two sizes. There is a 12 inch and a 10 inch. Now, most people, the 10 inch 
is sufficient enough. Uh, 12 inch, you, you might need if you knit like a um, size 15 sock, but most people can use the 10 inch uh, because they, it's the more average size foot. But you can use these for hats as well. You want to measure how deep from your brim to your top you need, you can use these as well. So that's why I call them head to toes because you can do them for hats or socks. So these, if you've never used one before, now this has centimeters and inches. It has the most common sock size needles here and a two inch gauge window. Now all my tools have these little hole up here. The tools when you get them, you order off Etsy or, or at a show, uh, they have this hole for a ball gauge. So a ball gauge, gauge comes with all your tools so you can hang it on something. You can hang it on your bag, you can hang it on your, um, your wheel if it's a spinning tool. But it's just a, a little hole that you can put that in. But anyway, back to how to use these. So you use these as if you're knitting, as if you're knitting toe down, toe, toe up, <laughs> toe up, cuff down, either way works. So I have a little sample here, a little piece, and then I do cuff down generally the way I do it. And if you want to stay consistent, now obviously I would keep going on this one. I cut it off so that I can have a sample, but if say you want to knit a five inch piece before you turn your heel. So you're going to slip it on to your ruler. Until now I'm only at four inches. So when you, when you're going and say you want to get to five inches, I know, oh, I need to knit a whole nother inch before I start to turn my heel. So I know to keep going. Then you turn, you do your heel. And if you want to do the same thing with the foot, say you need an eight and a half inch foot before you start your toe. So that's what I need. So for a nine and nine, nine and a quarter inch sock, if you pretend this is my heel down here now, you would slip it on and knit till you got to your eight and a half or eight and a quarter and then do your toe. You would just slip it in to the back part of the heel. So that's how that works. Uh, one great thing about all my tools is they are unfinished wood. There's always a blank side on the back. You can write on these. So you don't have to carry around that little piece of paper where you keep everybody's sizes. You can write on these uh, with a, a plain old ballpoint pen. Don't use one of those ink pens because it'll bleed into the wood. But if you want to write on these, you can just write your notes back here. You can write your common sizes. Um, the people that you feel are knitworthy, just make notes on the back of your sock ruler. Then, you know, if you ever run out of room, you either need a new sock ruler or you need a shorter list of who to knit socks for. But 12 and 10 inch is in those. All of these tools are really great gifts for knitters. Um, if you don't particularly want to buy somebody yarn, you don't know what colors they like, you don't know what weights they like, who doesn't need another tool, who doesn't need a whole nother notions kit to get ready to go. Um, so these are all something you can add into that and be unique too. And that's something you'd see all the time. Who likes to do swatch <laughs> swatches? I know I tried to get away with not doing swatches and it has backfired a couple times. Not terribly, um, just I end up with a garment that maybe I would like to have fit a little bit better. So I do have swatch windows and rulers. So this one is your average four inch here. So it is four inches across here. And then centimeters, it's about nine and three fourths. It's not exact, exactly four inches on the centimeters because you know those numbers don't match up perfectly. But the, the measurements are accurate. The It's unbelievable. You can actually see right here on my mat, that's dead on four inches. It's really amazing the laser cutter, how precise it is. So that's really awesome for any kind of measuring tool. So there is a four inch swatch gauge window there is a two inch one, more of an on the go. There is a one inch as well. And then there is an L shaped one. This one is kind of unique because it has two inches, two and a half inches, four inches and four inches here as well. So that one's just kind of a, a fun little measurement tool, not necessarily a swatch window because it doesn't give you that outer edge. But if you want to just line it up real quick and just count your rows and your um, stitches that works as well. 
So there are four different of those. And the one inch one is um, probably the most common one I use in my sock bag because I'm matching a sock knitting machine. Um, and it's just easier to stick it into my notions pouch. Let's see, some other tools that I have are fun different shaped wraps per inch cards. These are three, no, four inches by three inches. I make them in all sorts of different animals. This is a great place for customized ones. Um, there, there are actually a couple more on the Etsy shop, but there's like a butterfly ladybug, there's a goat, uh, let's see, can't remember the other ones, but there's a bunch. Uh, these are just a bigger one of this. And they just give you a, a way to be a little bit more personalized. All of these are super thick wood. You're not going to break these unless you're He-Man. Or, you know, you leave it outside for multiple seasons. They, it might start to get a little funky. But they're not flimsy wood. You're not going to have to worry about being super gentle with them. Uh, they're they're going to withstand. Something else. Same size. Oh, so yeah, there's a goat. There's a, I have all the same ones that I do in the gauges as I do the wraps per inch. So you can see where the ladybug, it's the needle sizes go from 0 to 15. Some of them have a 1 inch ruler on them as well. It just depends on the shape of the animal, what I could fit on it. This one has a 1 inch window. Uh, these ones are cut out. They're actually four different fiber animals. It's an alpaca, sorry, I can't get that right. Alpaca, goat, sheep, and an angora rabbit. It has a two inch ruler. And then this one is actually sheep shaped and has a two inch swatch gauge window there. And all of them do have their little hole to hang them. The sheep, I generally hang it through its eye, um, but you could hang it through any of the needle gauge holes as well. So those are just a little bit of fun, a little bit of way you can make your tools unique. Uh, if there's a sports team you want to do, uh, you know, favorite logo, your initials, any of that is fair game for those. So moving on, and there's a lot of them. There's actual um, typed out details in all the Etsy listings. These are some of my smaller things. Let me get some of these a little bit closer to me. These are called bobbins. Now, bobbins, another thing my husband named for me, are little bobbins <laughs> instead of bobbins, if you can hear the difference between what I'm saying, will hold your little floss bits. And I make them in two different sizes. And the reason I make them in two different sizes is these larger ones, they come in sets of three. The large ones will hold an entire DMC floss uh, within its legs and its head. So this one has got less on it than this does. Let me just show you real quick how to do it. Again, the super thick unfinished wood. Now you can see they've got three notches in them. They have a notch under each one of their legs and they have a notch in their mouth. So the way I do them is I catch it in one of the under the arm notches and just wrap and 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 wrap. And, wrap. and when you're almost to your end, you're going to catch it up in the mouth and it holds your yarn, yarn, floss, anything you want to put on there. So those are the large ones, the small ones, and I don't have a loose one. Let me take one out. The loose ones will hold the little ends. If you're doing color work or a shawl where you've got to keep switching, they hold your little ends so they're not bopping around. I used to use bread clips and actually one of the sweaters that I have worn multiple times still has one on the inside <laughs> and it's in a spot where I must not be able to feel it because I constantly forget it's there, but I still have one on the inside with the the end wrapped around it. So obviously I haven't had to wash that sweater yet. Um, or then I think I would have, I think I would have noticed it then. But it, it's one I just finished at the end of last year. So I haven't worn it too many times. 
but those are bobbins. They are super cute little things. Uh, they're also really great to keep in your knitting bag or your, even your purse if you're trying to color match something, just to take one of these instead of taking an entire skein with you. Just an idea. Let's see. Let's move on to, let's see. How about some stitch counters? How many of you have been knitting and knitting and knitting or casting on and you've lost count of where you are either you know just because you're watching something and Netflix all of a sudden got really good uh, maybe your kids walked in phone rang whatever and you've totally lost count of where you are so these little helpers are great because you can slip them on when you get to 25, 50, 75, 100, and 100, and then you don't have to recount hundreds worth of stitches. So when you're counting, you just slip one of these on, and these are the little light bulb markers, so you can take them off as you go. So when you get to 100, you can take 25, 50, and 75 off and move them on if you're casting on, obviously, more than 100 stitches. So that's why there are 200s versus multiples of the other ones. And this was another suggestion, customer suggestion. This is my average size one. They are just over half an inch each in size. She wanted smaller ones. I think she was doing something with mohair. So these ones are itty bitty. I mean, they're just over quarter of an inch. They're just, and they're really cute. Um, I mean, if, you, if you're someone who likes small things, these are really cute. And they're a little bit fiddly on this card, but once they're hanging on your knitting, they hang out there quite nicely. And obviously once you've cast on and you've gotten to the number of stitches you need, you can take them off and store them till the next time you need to count. So those come in two different sizes. Those are stitch counters. Along the same idea are, and sorry for the crinkling, I forgot to open this one, are sweater stitch markers. And sweater stitch markers are the same kind of shape, the little sheep head shape, and they have a beginning of round, two knit two togethers, uh, two slips, slip, knit, knit. Am I doing that right? SS, S, K, it's supposed to be SSK. Yeah, I misprinted that, but on, on the marker, it's correct. Slip, slip, knit. Anybody else see that mistake? I just noticed that. It says SKK. <laughs> two make one left and two make one right, and a beginning of round. So these are great for if you're doing a raglan sleeve sweater and you want to just keep them track. They come on this little circle ring so that you can keep them together after you take them off the card or put, um, toss them into your bag. These also come in two sizes, this size and the small size for um, a lighter sweater or if you just don't want something so big hanging on your needles. And these are the rings. They fit up to a 10 millimeter needle on them instead of the light bulb markers. So this is sweater markers. Then I have a bunch of different stitch markers. I just started making all these. And mostly because I was inspired by finding glitter acrylic. Uh, it's going to be hard to see those because the light wants to shine off all that glitter. But I made Christmas themed glitter stitch markers. So there is a snowman, a snowflake, a reindeer head. Uh, a gold stocking, a Santa head, and a Christmas tree. So by finding this glitter acrylic, and these hold these come in two different size needle um, marker hole. What would you call those rings? Those are called rings. Come in two different ring sizes, up to eight millimeters and then up to ten millimeters. So if you want smaller ones, there's just a drop down menu in the Etsy listing where you can choose what size needles you want. But these started off a whole new acrylic stitch marker line and they include and I'm going to leave these ones down here so you can see them yarn balls which are actually etched on one side uh, alpaca or not alpaca yeah alpacas or llamas they don't have faces so you can decide what they are and there's six per set they come in different colors there are the warm colors and then the cool colors when you when you see them on Etsy there's different listings mittens and the mittens have the different etchings on them 
and then there's the the warm colors of mittens. So these are going to be uh, changing here and there. I, I'll keep these ones. Not these won't be changing. I'll be adding new ones. So I've got a dog theme one keyed up, ready to go. I have sheep. Uh, let's see what else. Um, unicorns. I'm looking over this way because that's actually where I have an entire pile of them. Uh, just some uh, gnomes. I have a gnome set one that's super cute. There's two gnomes, a mushroom, a snail, and a watering can. <laughs> they're they're just they're way too much fun to make. So those are stitch markers in the different colors acrylic. Two different needle size rings you can choose for them. Another little fun notion: bag tags. These are that unfinished wood, so you can write on these. You can write your name, your contact information. If you don't want to put your phone number, put your local yarn shop, and they would hopefully have your name and your contact. They could get in contact if you've lost your bag. They have a little light bulb marker on them, so you can slip them right through your zipper, through like a D-ring on your bag, or if you have none of those, none of that hardware on your bag, you can actually um, pin this right through the fabric of the bag or the handle. So those are bag tags. They come in sets of three. There is a key ring tool. I know this is a lot. If you want to take your time perusing these, there is a tool tab in Etsy where you can look at them all at your own pace. This is a um, lobster claw up here. So you can clip it to any of your bags, your notion pouches, um, your backpack, anything like that. It has a zero to 11 knitting needle gauge, has a two inch ruler that has the centimeters as well, and a wraps per inch. Now it does have the details of the wraps per inch. It's pretty small because these are only two inches long. It is there, but it's pretty tiny. So that's just a really great little catch-all tool um, for your knitting notion bag. Then I have, we're getting down to it, front and back markers. The front and back markers are great if you're knitting something that it's kind of hard to tell what the front and the back is. So, or you know that you only increase on front sides, it's good to keep track of that. So there's a little sheep head for the front, a little sheep tail for the back. Those are, I, I love these. I think they're super, super silly. If you're looking for gifts, make fiber animal themed earrings. These are sterling silver earring hooks with the wood animals. There's an alpaca, a sheep, um, gauge earrings. These are accurate to the needle gauges and a second kind of sheep. There's four different of those. Cute little stocking stuffers for your knitting buddies. Let's see, what else? Uh, handmade tags. There are, this is not all of them. I have a bunch of them. Uh, they are the faux leather, so these aren't real leather tags, but they um, act just the same. And a lot of people are, feel more comfortable using faux leather than real. So there's alpaca. Sorry, it's kind of glaring out there. I can't take these out of the bag because then they go everywhere. And there's some sheep. There's a few different kinds of sheep. There's also different colors of the tags. I have blue ones, I have turquoise ones. There's light and dark gray ones. There's cute little furry sheep. There's uh, hearts. These are great if you're a knitter or crocheter because it's actually uh, that you can't see if it's a stitch or a crochet. Another little great stocking stuffer. So if you're a spinner and you're feeling a little left out in the notions department, <laughs> make handmade tags or hand, hand spun tags. I have these in knitting balls, sheep, hearts, I believe, if there's a custom one you would like and they're a set of 12, just uh, email me, message me in Etsy and we can see what we can come up with. And they come in the, each color, all 12 tags are a different color. And they're just little tags that you can add when you're done. And they say, if you can't read it, it says fiber content, the source, 
drafting method if you're somebody who likes all of a sudden you get to the end you're like oh wait I really like how that turned out it's good to make note of it wraps per inch your yardage the weight ounces or grams uh, structure two ply three ply single and any notes that you would like to make now the backs are blank so if the note section is not big enough just flip it over and write on the back they are hole punched so that you can just add them straight to your beautiful finished hand spun skein of yarn and ornaments I made sheepy ornaments I love these there's a couple of these on my tree it has a sheep with a gift and then a Christmas tree and they're 3d they're I mean what's not to love about that it's kind of they're hard to show really I took a picture of them outside on one of my boxwood bushes they turned out really well and last but not least I have needle keepers so needle keepers if you've never used one before maybe it's easier to see them on this yeah this one's bigger needle keepers are great to keep your needles out of your mouth or your feet if you drop your needle you don't want to keep finding it in your foot these are double magnets there is one attached to the wood and then there's a loose one so the loose one goes underneath whatever you're pinning it to now these are those earth magnets so they're super super strong you can pin it to your sweater and I would show you but my sweater is actually out of frame uh, you can put it through your sweater and it'll hold you can hear it snap it's I mean they're really strong you can put it on if you're an embroiderer you just put the one magnet underneath and it grabs it you could put it on your bag uh, trying to think what else you would stick it to <laughs> but anything that you've got a piece of something in between where this magnet and the one that's glued to the item would go it'll hold it so then your needle now obviously your most knitting darning needles are aluminum but any sewing needle is I mean I've never found one that's not metal it just sticks to that magnet because those magnets are so strong it will hold your needle that way like you're not sticking it into the side of your couch you're not trying to keep it like in the side of your bag uh, it's just gonna you're gonna know where it is it's called a needle keeper for a reason so they are various different patterns um, and you'll see a lot of my patterns repeat there's the ladybug the sheep um, an alpaca a butterfly I think those are the only ones I have made currently but again if you if you'd like a custom one just message me so those are my needle keepers uh, I'm not sure I have anything else left uh, you can follow me on Instagram or uh, Facebook I'm on Facebook as well uh, to follow along there just uh, keep track of what we're what I'm doing what I'm up to what something new is coming about I do have something I'm super super excited about to share but the finishing piece of it didn't come in time so maybe by first week of December I'll be able to share that uh, it's something that's they're so unique that it not something I can tell you what it is it's a new bag <laughs> but it includes a whole different aspect of um, the fiber arts and they're they're gonna be really really special and unique so keep keep track of my uh, Instagram and my social media for those because there will only be one of each one and they're pieces of art versus just a regular project bag and they're gonna be wonderful uh, really bummed the piece the final piece of it didn't come I needed a little bag feet for underneath and I can't take any product photos until those come so we'll see maybe they'll get here in time and I can put pictures up on my Facebook so thank you for all for joining uh, if you are viewing now and you'd like to come uh, needle felt a sheep with us if you have your own needing uh, needle felting supplies feel free to join you register under the camp yarnsy website you can also just come hang out if you want to see how we make a sheep the kits are still available in my Etsy so if you want to watch and maybe like make mental notes of how we're doing it or take notes as we go 
feel free to do that too. And then you can order the kit and I'll ship it out and you can make yourself a little needle, needle felted sheep. Um, they're really, really cute. They're made with Gotland locks and I'm looking forward to having some fun. So enjoy your afternoon and we'll see you later this evening. Bye guys. Thanks for joining.